Mark Murray, thank you very much for joining us today. Really appreciate it and here to talk about the history of Michigan's charter schools and your important role in it. And uh, uh, Don, I'm pleased to be here. And uh, first, uh, you've occupied a n number of positions uh, since the inception of charters in through its implementation. C could you tell us a little bit about where you were when the charters and chartering ideas started coming about in Michigan? Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate the uh, the opportunity to visit. The, mm -hmm. uh, the in that beginning phase. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was in the Department of Management and Budget in the mm -hmm. State Budget Office, and so I was uh, the Deputy Director in fairly broad responsibilities across mm -hmm. all state spending, and then uh, subsequent to that uh, became the Budget Director, uh, both in Governor Engler's administration. Mm -hmm. uh, left for a short period of time, worked at Michigan State University, and then came back mm -hmm. and worked as State Treasurer. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the Governor asked me to be Education Advisor. Okay. Uh, it's one of the uh, interesting realities of Michigan mm -hmm. is you have an independently elected State Board of Education. They appoint the state superintendent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there ends up being for a governor who is generally held accountable for how education is doing as it relates to state policy mm -hmm. is actually a separate mm -hmm. governance structure. Sure. And so it's not uncommon for the governor to have an education advisor. So he's asked me mm -hmm. to be treasurer as well as education advisor. And then uh, subsequent to that came to Grand Valley State University mm -hmm. as its president. So in all three seats, mm -hmm. I was involved with chartering from mm -hmm. different vantage points uh, early in the uh, opening days of charter schools mm -hmm. and uh, subsequently as uh, one who was uh, guiding a charter school mm -hmm. office, uh, mm -hmm. largely hands off, it was in good shape, mm -hmm. uh, but both for uh, ensuring that we had standards of quality, so we mm -hmm. did close some charter schools uh, mm -hmm. during my time as president, as well as open a number of them. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your time as education advisor. What were some of the issues the state was facing at that time? Well, the uh, probably the biggest uh, issue on the table at that time uh, was following on some experiences that had occurred in Chicago mm -hmm. where there had been a, a turning of the responsibility of the schools mm -hmm. to the mayor of Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, again, these questions of governance can get fairly complicated. Uh, the, who, who leads a city? Typically a mayor, but the schools are their own independent entity. So mm -hmm. uh, Governor Engler proposed uh, in his State of the State message that uh, the state would be open to a discussion, and actually in the State of the State message proposed in Lansing, Grand Rapids, and Detroit, mm -hmm. that uh, the mayor be given control of education, be able to make decisions about who would be on a board and how, how the schools mm -hmm. would be governed. To, to unify, uh, obviously, in, in each of those cities, but I think most of us uh, probably more focused on Detroit, mm -hmm. uh, there have been some population dynamics. Sure. Uh, as the schools have been challenged, people have left the city. Uh, mayor Duggan right now facing some of the same kind mm -hmm. of questions, and, and I'm sure he's gonna approach it with, with real vigor, as he always does. Mm -hmm. uh, but that proposal went in front of the legislature, mm -hmm. and uh, it ended up being a uh, fairly contentious question. Uh, mm -hmm. The mayor at the time was Mayor Archer. Mm -hmm. uh, good, solid mayor, uh, good partnership with the governor mm -hmm. uh, in getting this legislation passed. Uh, it came out of the Senate pretty, pretty easily. Uh, got to the House and uh, was not accepted in the same form. The House okay. actually passed a bill which was to turn it over to essentially a single state receiver. Okay. And then in the legislative compromise that came out of uh, uh, the final, in the final bill, mm -hmm. was a, uh, a, a mix so that it was an appointed board. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor would appoint, I believe there were seven members, six of the seven members, and then the seventh member would be the state superintendent okay. of public instruction uh, or his or her designee. Okay. Uh, and that was the model that then was responsible for hiring a new superintendent of the Detroit mm -hmm. Public Schools. So that was the sort of opening issue for, uh, occupied pretty much six, nine months of the, okay. my time as uh, education advisor as well as being treasurer. Okay. And at that time, the, the charter 
sector in Michigan was still pretty nascent too. Well, I don't. I, I'm not sure I can bring up the numbers. I, there, okay. there was a charter. There was a charter mm -hmm. business in place. Uh, so this would have been '99. Mm -hmm. Uh, so well, we can go look it up somewhere about how sure. many charter schools there were. But there were a, a, a good number of charter schools in place at that time. Uh, certainly not the numbers that ultimately came. Mm -hmm. There also were caps on how many charters there could be mm -hmm. uh, and clear delineations about who had the authority to authorize. Mm -hmm. uh, during that same period, uh, the decision was made in the legislature to uh, more uh, to broaden out the mm -hmm. tribal community college authority to open charter schools. Mm -hmm. and of course, the tribes have no circumscribed boundaries, yeah. and so uh, they added more into the charter school system. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, long past my tenure, but uh, the, the, the cap was uh, mm -hmm. removed. So, yeah. and what were some of your thoughts at the time of how charters and the district reforms you were working on might interact with each other? I think the uh, I, I'll, I'll take it back maybe a step. The mm -hmm. uh, I began my time in state government uh, in 1978, working in the Michigan Department of Social Services, mm -hmm. and uh, it was I was hired because I had some technical expertise to do some essentially budget modeling, mm -hmm. uh, but I also had pretty keen interest in policy, and uh, this question of how we help families flourish, mm -hmm. particularly poor families, uh, is a pretty central question to what uh, concerned me all the way through my time mm -hmm. uh, in state government. Uh, certainly, education is a central part of that question. And then the, the immediate and obvious question is, how do we strengthen public education? Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't directly involved in that. I was involved in some education and training kind of programs as it related to public assistance recipients or school mm -hmm. dropouts or those kind of things. Uh, but what uh, became clear in those initial debates, mm -hmm. and I can remember, so this is all based in Lansing. Yep. That's where I'm, I'm, we, we lived in the city of Lansing. Uh, and I was struck by the fact that there was a debate about whether parents should have more choices in where mm -hmm. they can enroll their, their, their children. And uh, what was obvious was that all the people with means had choice. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not the scenic beauty of the Red Cedar River that was moving people to Okemos. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't you know, the, the, the new subdivisions in Hazlitt that was moving people to Hazlitt. It was the schools. Mm -hmm. People with means were moving to places. It, subsequently, it was places like DeWitt and other places. It moved places because they had such absolute determination mm -hmm. that they were going to do the best they could to give their children access to the best education they could possibly give it, mm -hmm. give them in the public school system, and often at significant material sacrifice. Sometimes these were houses that were pushing people a little bit outside their mortgage comfort levels, but sure. they were going to get their kids, or renting an apartment, where they were going to get their kids in East Lansing, Oklahoma schools. And... Uh, we're living in Lansing, and we've got neighbors and friends down the street at different Lansing public schools. Mm -hmm. and some really good schools. Many of those kids got very good education. But many of the poorer kids in mm -hmm. those schools didn't have that choice. Yeah. And it was that uh, framing that took me around the corner to say, yes, there are some risks mm -hmm. in opening this up, because who's going to go out to these new opportunities will be the people who've got parents engaged, or family members, extended family members engaged enough that they'll, that they'll make this kind of choice. And that has some risk of sort mm -hmm. of who gets left behind in mm -hmm. these schools. And that had always been a concern because again, my orientation was how do we make sure we make uh, systems work as well as they can mm -hmm. for the people who are in the most economic vulnerability. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was that that brought me around the corner. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was the Henry Ford Academy was the first one. And because I was doing the budget work, we were always mm -hmm. attendant to budget implications and enrollment trends sure. and those kind of things, but not directly involved in some of the early initial legislation, okay. uh, other than would occasionally sit in on 
overall policy planning mm -hmm. kind of meetings for, for the administration because the budget fundamentally has to support whatever policy initiative is underway. Sure, and within the, within the Department of Treasury, I'm sure that there were some ch changes that needed to be made in order to accommodate charters and chartering, anything with the how funds flow, oh, yeah. cash that, flows, or well, mostly like that. that. Mostly that came out of the Department of Education. Department of Education okay. is the one that essentially registers a school in mm -hmm. and opens up essentially the payment channels. Treasury makes the payments, mm -hmm. uh, but it only happens when the Department of Ed has uh, anointed the fact, mm -hmm. and they that there there was the as the law yeah. ensued and charters were authorized by essentially mostly by public universities starting up at Central Grand Valley was an early part of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, then, then the Treasury was in the payment mechanism. But uh, Doug Roberts was my predecessor as mm -hmm. State Treasurer and, uh, and also my successor. When I left to come to Grand Valley, Doug came back uh, mm -hmm. to the good outcome of the state mm -hmm. of Michigan. Uh, and he was uh, he'd former Deputy Superintendent of Education. So, mm -hmm. so all the time, Doug and I were always uh, on the periphery of mm -hmm. the discussions or more centrally involved, depending on what the nature of the educational discussion sure. was. So when you, tran let's talk a little bit about when you transitioned over to Grand Valley. Mm -hmm. So G GVSU, when you came in, in as president, GVSU was already involved in charters and chartering. And right. how did you view GVSU's charter activities relative to all of the other things going on at the university? How central did you see it to the university's mission? Uh, I, I, I would say I saw it in the uh, sort of second circle okay. of, of centrality. The first circle is the responsibility of the students. Mm -hmm. um, and so questions, uh, first things on my mind were, uh, where are we on enrollment? How do we support incoming freshmen, particularly mm -hmm. given the reality of so many being first generation students? And so there's a lot of focus there. Uh, I knew that the charter school office generally was operating fine and had a good reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, it was there were there were not there there have always been concerns that there's some charters floundering around not doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, the question then is is that a, an early startup problem or is that a, a long term problem? Mm -hmm. uh, that was not by any general sense an issue at Grand Valley. So I checked mm -hmm. in and made sure I understood what mm -hmm. was going on there in the office, uh, but most of my initial focus was on the core work of a university. Mm -hmm. I, I think it belongs in the second circle, not the third or fourth or fifth, because mm -hmm. it is also fundamental about an educational role mm -hmm. as a public institution. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there, uh, I was bound and determined that we would build on the best schools and the good schools we had, mm -hmm. and that we would always be prepared to shutter the doors uh, of failing charter schools mm -hmm. if in fact we had given them an appropriate amount of time. Mm -hmm. And appropriate's obviously a judgment question. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to give schools enough time, enough couple of years to make sure that things are getting better. And mm -hmm. uh, so many kids come into a new charter school mm -hmm. with serious educational deficiencies. Otherwise, they, the parents wouldn't necessarily have saw to move. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have to fulfill the promise of mm -hmm. helping them make educational progress. And that's the the art of figuring out whether you've given somebody enough time or whether you haven't. Yeah. Any, uh, some of those are very tough decisions. Were there any tough decisions on openings or closings that landed on your desk as president? Or? No. Uh, once I was confident that we had a system of metrics, mm -hmm. we had a schedule of visiting board meetings and mm -hmm. boards and where we thought it was necessary, we, the charter school office, mm -hmm. thought it was necessary going in and spending time in the schools. Once I saw that the systems were good, I, I was confident, and I obviously confident but also verifying, mm -hmm. uh, that, that it was being managed well. Mm -hmm. uh, if we had to close a school mm -hmm. or if we had to open a school, that was a board action. Yep. And so I always wanted to understand why mm -hmm. uh, we were confident that we could go ahead and, and uh, support the opening of a new school mm -hmm. by a particular uh, charter school operator. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also wanted to hear the detail on why we were closing. Mm -hmm. uh, there I would occasionally, because at the point that someone's at risk of being closed, mm -hmm. uh, there is some 
uh, community concern going mm -hmm. on because there's not been the kind of performance people have wanted. And that sure. typically gets to a president mm -hmm. uh, about the same time the chair school office head gets to the president. Sure. Uh, and uh, so I, I'm not sure I can pull up all the particulars, but I can remember at least one uh, where uh, there was kind of a tough call about mm -hmm. whether this is the year or whether we're going to give them one more year. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in that particular case, gave him one more year, uh, and then ultimately it was closed. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, uh, you know, hindsight, perfect mm -hmm. hindsight. You'd say, well, that's too bad because that's one more year that we yeah. didn't give those kids the education. But it was a, it was a, uh, a good judgment. It was a, it was a judgment call, but it was a fair judgment being made by the charter mm -hmm. school office that there was still plausible chance that this sure. progress could be made. Uh, we had one closure that got. A fairly contentious uh, school in Detroit that we mm -hmm. were closing, uh, where uh, it's the only time then my time here when uh, literally busloads of people mm -hmm. came up to uh, Allendale to mm -hmm. attempt to reverse the decision to close the school. How did how did trustees react to that? Uh, they were they were found it very compelling the the analytics that we had mm -hmm. done. Uh, so there was no factual question mm -hmm. about whether or not this was appropriate. But I think uh, it was, uh, it's heart-wrenching mm -hmm. uh, when you've got parents who have made the decision to enroll their child in a school and the one thing that they are certain of is that it is safe mm -hmm. and it's orderly. And we never had any evidence that the school wasn't safe or orderly, mm -hmm. and they knew it. And so there were some quite emotional, legitimately emotional expressions of mm -hmm. real concern, because where where is my child going to be yeah. next year? I, I, I pulled them out of this school, and there were different mm -hmm. schools they pulled them out of. Uh, my child wasn't safe, and that's pretty heart-wrenching. Mm -hmm. uh, we felt we had a really basic responsibility safety order mm -hmm. but education yeah and we couldn't we couldn't demonstrate to ourselves any meaningful educational gains there and i don't mean this as aspersions on the people running the school i don't know what all the problems were mm -hmm. frankly in the end it wasn't our responsibility to diagnose what every problem was yeah. our responsibility was to work with authorizer with with charter school mm -hmm. operators who could effectively raise education? Again, mm -hmm. That was their business, and in this particular case, it wasn't happening. But it was a, it was a pretty, uh, pretty hard meeting. Yeah. How, how did you interact with other university presidents around charters and chartering? Was it a conversation that would come up at presidents' council, or was it by that time was it pretty uh, institutionalized within each organization and um, functioned uh, with less direct guidance? Uh, somewhere in between. Uh, we, we, there was a little bit of conversation. Uh, certainly uh, many of us uh, knew of Central Michigan's mm -hmm. pioneering work. And frankly, a number of people had a pretty high regard for Grand Valley, mm -hmm. for our uh, standards and our data mm -hmm. collection. And so uh, there were some interactions mm -hmm. around that, but most of the time when presidents are together, they're on, on the core business, the, sure. the central circle. And so we were mostly focused on enrollment or uh, mm -hmm. you know, state funding or all the, the normal things that university presidents worry about mm -hmm. as it relates to, to their, their yeah. colleagues. So this year marks the 25th anniversary of the Charter Schools Law's passage in Michigan. Looking back over the last 25 years, t taking the long view at it, what are some of your thoughts, what are some of the successes, some of the challenges that, that have happened over the last 25 years from your perspective? I think uh, I, th I think it's a mostly positive, but a little bit of a mixed story. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some really uh, wonderful educational gains that have happened for mm -hmm. some of our uh, most in need young mm -hmm. people. Uh, I've had particular engagement with some of the uh, they used to be called the Thompson schools, mm -hmm. but the uh, university prep schools in Detroit, and. Uh, overall mm -hmm. done very well. And when they've had issues in some of their schools, I've always felt like they got 
to it right away. Mm -hmm. They were very attentive, and, and it doesn't mean they haven't had some issues, but they have mm -hmm. addressed them and gotten back on the mm -hmm. educational achievement path. Uh, and uh, I've been to graduations. I've met with young people in mm -hmm. the schools. I've attended assemblies, and it's uh, extremely heartening uh, mm -hmm. to see students and families be given an opportunity for a high quality education. Mm -hmm. And there are other opportunities like that uh, in the traditional schools, in schools of choice and other places. Uh, but the fact that there's typically a waiting list for the charters is still proof that there's still more interest in mm -hmm. high quality. I, the best thing that could happen would be to have traditional public schools make great progress and, mm -hmm. and sort of obviate the need for charters. That'd be mm -hmm. the, in some ways the perfect world. I think the question of, uh, especially one of the original premises or promises mm -hmm. of charter schools was that there would be some significant curriculum innovations mm -hmm. and some really uh, specialty kind of schools. Uh, we've got an environmental uh, school here in West Michigan, mm -hmm. and that's an example of that. And there's, again, a lot of good examples. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what my my summary would be is that the charter school operators in general found that innovation was less the need. What was really needed was the very fundamental basics. Mm -hmm. We we have to help young people get up to reading at grade level. Mm -hmm. uh, that these ideas of math and science academies or environmental academies or foreign language academies mm -hmm. or whatever they might be. Again, there are some and they're working well generally, mm -hmm. uh, but I think the movement mm -hmm. uh, ended up being a little bit more of a basics mm -hmm. kind of program. And, and at that level, for the whole common good, mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice to see a little bit more in the innovative space. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I think, frankly, that's an example of where the traditional public schools in many cases have uh, responded and said, no, actually, we'll take the innovation space. Mm -hmm. And they've come up with some specialty schools. And so you've got more elementary level foreign language immersion mm -hmm. schools and things like that yep. that are being run in traditional public schools, which is just terrific. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, in some ways, it's a surprise there isn't more of it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but that's, those would be some of the summaries. And then I, and the, to say it's, it's a little bit of a mixed bag, there's mm -hmm. also, uh, it's hard to look at the data on achievement mm -hmm. and say we're doing enough. Uh, there still are failing schools. I'm not close enough to it now to know whether I would judge that people are moving fast enough mm -hmm. to address them, either fixing or closing. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly their schools are closing and they are b being fixed and addressed and ameliorated and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, would, I would always have a little bit of anxiety of do we, do we have enough intensity? These are extraordinarily uh, important years. You, mm -hmm. you take that, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade kind of period, uh, okay, okay, we'll give somebody another couple of years to get it right. Well, you don't have a couple of years. Yeah. These, are, these are so basic about not only forming uh, learning capacity and these basic building blocks of, of math, uh, arithmetic skills and, and mm -hmm. reading skills, but you've also got a whole self-image, who am I? Mm -hmm. Am I a learner? Am I not? Am I a dweeb? What am I? Mm -hmm. And, and that, f that is so hard for young people uh, to be lost and bewildered. And, and then, of course, you know, the risk is they begin acting out and all. And so these are the, the intensity, the need to just be all in all the time mm -hmm. uh, is just so critical. And again, I, these are human institutions. Yeah. Uh, they they get to a scale and they become a little bit too procedural occasionally, mm -hmm. and sometimes the intensity has to get refired up. Yeah, C going back to to the innovation and some of the innovation that you've mentioned is happening in in the district world. Uh, I know one of the original ideas behind charters was they would would that they would be that they would spur competition right. and encourage the districts to do more and different things. Do do you think that some of that innovation is a response to what's to, to, to the development of the charter sector. I, I, I do. I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's. That's the reason mm -hmm. only, but it is certainly one of the reasons. Okay. Uh, and that innovation is going on in different places. When I was again living in the Lansing School mm -hmm. District, the mayor asked me to serve on a task force to help. This is Mayor Halster to mm -hmm. help figure out how to what we could do to boost the performance of Lansing Public Schools. There was no question. Mm -hmm. that the reality of charters 
was driving an urgency about mm -hmm. fixing up the Lansing Public Schools. I mean, that's just, that was a simple fact in the room. Uh, and how well we succeeded in improving the Lansing Public Schools is to be judged by others. Mm -hmm. But the question of whether people would make some changes because of this quote unquote competition, mm -hmm. I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, certainly, in here we're sitting in June of 2018, mm -hmm. Uh, Mayor Duggan is intensely focused on the Detroit Public Schools because so many kids in Detroit are going either to schools of choice outside the district or in charters. Mm -hmm. His legitimate interest in improving the mm -hmm. quality of Detroit Public Schools. Yeah. So again, looking back over the last 25 years, how would you summarize Grand Valley State University's reputation in the chartering sector? I, I think it's quite good. I, mm -hmm. uh, and again, I'm a little bit distant from it now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Grand Valley uh, has earned a reputation for being quite disciplined about metrics, mm -hmm. uh, being willing to intervene when they see problems, being willing to close schools when they mm -hmm. see problems, tilting toward better operators for any additional authorization mm -hmm. that they do, and uh, ensuring that I mean, there's, a, there's a fair amount of money involved as well because mm -hmm. a, a, a fraction of the, of the money for, per student comes to a charter school office. Mm -hmm. and, and I always admired the fact, and I was part of it, so I, I, was, uh, uh, I felt it was urgent mm -hmm. not to spend all that money. Yeah. Drive some of that money back into the schools that we're responsible for. We didn't mm -hmm. need all that money up here, and we didn't need all that money to, to pay our own, our own bills mm -hmm. and our own freight. So I, I was uh, appreciative that Grand Valley has held a commitment mm -hmm. to fiscal uh, discipline to make sure some of that money's back in improving the schools themselves. Yeah. Great. Mark, thank you very much for the time today. I really appreciate it. Don, I was happy to Great. take time. Thanks.